Jill Jones with SPNN, and in this episode of Market, we ask the question, what really is organic? We're here at the University of Minnesota where we're going to meet with organics expert Jim Riddle, and maybe he can shed a little light on that question. Let's go talk to Jim. Hey, Jim. Hi, Jill. Really good to see you. Yeah, welcome. Thanks good so much you. for inviting us out here. Yeah, thanks. So Jim, tell me how you got involved in organic food production. Well, I grew up on a farm and then was raising produce down in the Winona area, organic produce, helped start the farmer's market there, okay. and then worked as an organic inspector for 20 years and served a five-year term on the USDA National Organic Standards Board. And now for the last six years, I worked for the University of Minnesota doing organic outreach work. Okay, so, so you really do know what you're talking about. Well, let's hope so. Okay, and, and so now for the $32 billion question. What really is organic? Yeah, well, that was the sale of organic uh, foods last year in the U.S., so there's a lot of people uh, seeking it out. And organic foods are essentially grown in healthy soil. You know, soils that haven't had synthetic fertilizers or pesticides applied, no genetic engineering, which is a big concern these days. And the foods haven't been irradiated. But it's more what the farmers do to help promote a healthy environment. Okay. So keeping pollinators uh, on their farms, uh, planting clover as cover crops, using compost, um, you know, and green manure crops for fertility. Sure. Um, just keeping the plants and the animals healthy. So what are the pesticides? What does does it what's it doing to to us as our, in our bodies when we're when we're taking in those pesticides well, does it really matter well sure there's uh, the president's cancer panel findings okay. uh, that were released a couple years ago but the evidence just continues to mount the more research is done the more benefits we're finding so we know we're getting a health benefit by not taking in uh, the chemicals with organic produce, but is the nutrition content any different? The trends of the research certainly are positive. Now, just one 10-year study done by University of California, Davis, looking at conventional tomatoes and organic tomatoes, finding that the levels of antioxidants increased about uh, twice as much, well, 97% wow. increase in antioxidant levels with the organic practices. Okay. And what's really interesting is over time, using the organic practices, those levels kept going up, whereas with conventional, those levels of the nutrients just stayed flat. They didn't increase because you're not building the health of the soil. So you had mentioned the, the clover as a ground cover as one of the techniques that organic farmers use. And, and, and how does that affect the soil? Yeah, well, clover is a legume, which means okay. it fixes nitrogen from the atmosphere and puts that into the soil. So um, the bed of clover can be tilled under, and then you don't have to purchase a nitrogen fertilizer, okay. and vegetables can be grown on that side next year and rotate back and forth. So one of the sayings of organic is feed the soil, not the plants. And a healthy soil makes healthy plants, healthy animals, healthy people. Right, right. Um, then you were asking about livestock. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, to be certified organic for dairy or beef, uh, the animals have to eat all organic feed, so better than I fed my children okay. even. Right. Um, but they don't receive any hormones, no antibiotics, no GMOs, of course. But also, if they're grazing animals, they have to be on pasture a significant part of the time, at least 120 days a year. Research has shown that feeding animals pasture and forage leads to healthier meat and milk um, than for humans to consume. So let's say you're an organic producer and you're having just this horrible year with pests. They're just taking over. Do you just lose your crop? It's always a challenge. Farming is a challenge no matter how you do it. Sure. Um, but with organic, you usually have more diversity. So some things are going to have a good year, other things might struggle. But there's quite a few um, approved pesticides that are allowed in organic and, you know, based on natural formulations, neem oil or pyrethrum. Uh, but also things like row covers to protect the fragile crops from uh, flea beetles or insect pests. But that crop rotation is another one of the fundamental practices that really helps break the pest cycles. 
So Jim, if you don't mind switching gears a little bit here, what's a GMO? Right. Why does it matter? Uh -huh. What is uh -huh. that all about? Yeah, well, GMO stands for genetically modified organisms. Okay. So these are crops that have had their DNA changed. So they have uh, uh, DNA from totally different kingdoms, from bacteria put into a corn plant, for instance. And uh, research in Europe has shown that um, these novel proteins are causing um, liver problems, kidney failure, uh, reproduction problems. So when we're supporting an organic crop farmer that's using a non-GMO seed, we're really propelling that movement to ask for a more clear understanding of what we're eating and what's well, in our Well, sure. Food supply. I mean, certainly buying from farmers that you know and trust and then looking for that certified organic label. Well, your, your passion for what you do really shows in your expertise, and we're really grateful that you had us out here today to share what you're doing. Well, thanks. I mean, it, it's exciting uh, to see the interest, and it certainly tastes better. Right, exactly. <laughs> thanks so much, Jim. Yeah, thank you.